Well, good morning, and thank you so much for being here with us today in the room. And if you're joining us from one of our Rockfish gatherings, welcome to you. You know, about 30 years ago, when the military dropped me off at what was then Fort Bragg to wrap up my military career, we began visiting churches around the area. And there's one that sticks out. And I don't know if it is so much because of what they taught, but because of what I saw as I was leaving. As I was driving off of their parking lot, there was a sign. I didn't even notice it on the way in, but the sign on the driveway headed out said, you are now entering the mission field. And as I, as I realized that now, looking back, I thought that's a church who understands what they're here to do. That we're not here simply to gather together on a Sunday morning to come and hang out and do a few things, sing some songs, take communion together, pray, hear a message and go home. We're here to prepare for the mission that we have been given. And what's the mission that we've been given? As Jesus departed this earth, he said to those disciples that saw him ascend into heaven, he said, go and make disciples of all nations. Baptize them in my name and teach them to observe all that I taught. That's our mission. We call it the great co-mission because we're in this mission together. And today we're doing something a little different. We're kicking off a series, if you will, about eight work weeks worth of teaching that we're simply calling Equipping Point because we are here to be equipped for the mission that we have as not Rockfish Church, not Rockfish Church only, but as the church, the church that Jesus Christ established. We are here to prepare, to equip ourselves, to go out into the mission field to which we have all, as followers of Christ, been sent. I want to ask you to pray with me one more time. Father God, thank you for who you are. Thank you that you put us here and that you give us your word to help us better prepare for what you have us to do. I pray, Father, that we would be on point and that we would be on mission in all that we do. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Now, you see it all over the church. And you, I saw Pastor Jeff in the Reach video from the Philippines. He was wearing a shirt that said, Make, Equip, and Release. And that's what we're here to do. We're here to make disciples of Jesus Christ. We're here to, to tell people who Jesus is. And then we're here to teach them. We're here to teach one another what it means to be a follower of Christ, what it means to be a disciple, which simply means student. We're here to teach one another, to equip one another. And then we're here to release. And when you hear the word release, I think sometimes that gets a little misunderstood that we're sending people on their way to go do what they do. No, we're making disciples and we're teaching or equipping them to accomplish the mission that we have all been given to do. But then we're releasing you to do that from wherever you are. Not to go, you don't have to go to the Philippines. You don't have to go to anywhere other than to where God has sent you. And where God sent you is maybe where you're headed tomorrow or Tuesday. He sent you to the people that are around you. He sent me to North Carolina. And the first time I came, I, I recall, you know, I had been stationed in Arizona, which that part of Arizona, very high elevation. And the first thing I noticed here was how much air there was to breathe. But after running about four miles, I realized there's also this humidity thing. And I was ready to go back to the thin air pretty quickly. But God sent us all somewhere. He sent you here. He sent you here even today to hear as we begin to talk about what it means to be equipped. Equipping point. Why do you think we need to have a mission? Why do you think we need to equip one another? Why do we need to be on mission together? To maintain focus. We have got something that we're all called to do. And he gives us this mission and he focuses us focuses us, focuses us into this point in time 
so that we can begin to focus on the mission that we have all been given. And as we come here and we realize that we're not alone in this mission, that is, is the co-mission that we have all been given, we begin to operate and train and work in unity, realizing that we have been given the mission to accomplish in this world. Not one of us individually, we have all have the same mission. So we come together to this equipping point, the church, to begin to equip, to prepare, to be prepared for what we have got ahead of us. And as we begin to, to focus in and we begin to see things with a little more clarity, we begin to drive forward with a clear understanding of what it is that we are here to do. At Rockfish Church, we boil that down to making, equipping, and releasing fully committed followers of Jesus Christ. That is our commission. That is the great commission. And it reminds us that Jesus has asked us to do some very, very important things. Let me ask you to turn with me. If you've got your Bible today, turn to 2 Timothy chapter 3, beginning at verse 16. If you've got your phone with you, you've got your Bible with you, the, the Bible app. Uh, it's easy to follow along. As a matter of fact, you, if you're in the Bible app, you can click events and select Rockfish Church weekend services. You'll get the scripture we're going to use today. You'll get a place where you can take notes. You can see the notes that I'm going to be teaching from, and you can send those notes to yourself as you begin to hear something that maybe stirs in your spirit a little bit. But let's read this together. Wow, that's high up there. Second Timothy chapter 3. All scripture is God-breathed and useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. And here's where we see that word equip or equipped one more time. And it points back to the word of God. It says that this is how we prepare. You know, this series is about equipping us to become mature followers of Jesus Christ, to become disciples, to grow in Christ. It's to help us help others to become mature followers of Jesus Christ. And it's to help us to serve one another in the body of Christ more effectively. That's what we're here to do. And this passage reminds us of this profound impact that Scripture is to have on our lives. And today we're going to explore this a little more deeply. We're going to see that even these verses, all that we study and all that we hear today can be used for success and for personal growth, for kingdom growth, kingdom expansion, and for the joy of doing good. You know, we find this in this world. So we're here today, and I want to encourage you and I want to challenge you to prepare to be prepared because that's what we're doing. We are getting ready to drive out, to head out on to the mission field. So why do we equip? Number one, we equip for success. You know, being unprepared is really, if you think about it, preparing for failure. If you head out onto the mission field, you would never, if you're a member of the military, you would never just bring a group of ragtag folks along hand them a weapon, and point them where to go. No, man, you train. You work together. You begin to build camaraderie. You begin to focus on the mission. You look at what it is that you have ahead of you, and then together, in a co-mission, you go out. You are commissioned onto the battlefield. See, the right equipment, the right tools, the right knowledge, they're all necessary for success, no matter what it is you're doing. And so when we look at what we're called to do, what the mission of the church is, we realize that we, too, have to have the right equipment. We need the right tools, and we need knowledge that's necessary for us to succeed. And the Word of God is, quite simply, the greatest resource that there is available to any one of us for living well, for living right, and for living successfully in the eyes of God and in the eyes of man. There's nothing in here that's going to steer you the wrong direction. I mean, think about it. 
If, if you, you think of this as a compass, what does a compass do? A compass, regardless of the circumstances, helps us find the direction that we should go. Think about a captain on a ship in a stormy sea. You can't tell one direction from the other. Clouds covering every direction. You have no idea where the sun came up or where it's headed or even where it is now. But with that compass, the captain of that ship can begin to steer in the right direction as best he can, even in the midst of a storm. And this Bible, this Bible is our compass. This is the tool that we need for life. This is what we need to navigate all that comes our way and all that we walk into, even unknowingly large or small, and while the Bible may not answer every tiny little situation that you come up against, it'll keep you pointed in the right direction, no matter what you come up against. So I want you to begin to think of this as your navigational tool, navigational for your entire life, because there are storms. If you're not in one now, if you didn't just come out of one, there's one ahead, and you need to know your bearing. You need to know whether to turn to the right or to the left, or whether you're to drive on straight ahead, regardless of what comes your way. Another purpose for us equipping is for our personal growth. You know, we desire here at Rockfish that you grow into everything that God has called you to. And we're called to different places. We, we work in different places during the week. We have family members that come from different walks of life. I see people here with, with motorcycle colors on. God has sent them to people he didn't send me to, and they are here to prepare to reach those people to whom they were sent. I know people in this room who work at assisted living places, who, who go in and sing and teach in these places, and others who go into prisons and teach the people there and help them to grow. We're here to come together together to equip them to do what God has called them to do, just like you. We're here to help you equip for the people that God sent you to, whether that's a prison, whether that's a group of motorcyclists, or whether that's the people that work at Dollar General. We're here to equip you to prepare, and that's why we gather. This is part of our mission as Rockfish Church, to help you prepare for the mission that God has sent you to. And you're going to find that this Bible the Word of God itself is transformative. Man, we should be seeing chains in our life. And as you read through and as you walk through and as you begin to apply this to your life, you're going to find out this is also quite tested. This has stood the test of time. This has stood the test of many, many trials. And if you've ever trusted God through a bad situation in your life, you already know you know that you can rely on God. You know that God is not going to steer you wrong. And you know there are things in this word that will help keep you going in the right direction. And most of all, this is true. There's a world out there who, who changes the definition of truth, changes the definition of right and wrong at the drop of a dime. Yet we know we've got something that we can rely on. Every one of us, we've got the word of God. We've got the word of the one who created this universe, who we can look to, what we can look to, to understand what God has called us to. And through its teachings, we, we learn about our identity in Christ, and that boosts our understanding of our self-worth and even our confidence. When we know that we're standing on the truth, how much more confident can you be Another purpose is for kingdom growth. You know, we're here to reach people. What's our commission again? To go and to make disciples of all nations, to baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and to teach them to observe all that Christ himself taught. You know, and as you grow, your ability to help others increases, and that is absolutely necessary for the kingdom itself to grow. We're not here to make the church bigger, not the, the group of people that's sitting in this room that we call the church. We're here to make the church bigger. Those who know that Jesus is Lord, those who claim him as Savior, 
and understand what he has done for us. We're here to grow that group of people in this world. And scripture simply equips us to, to share the gospel effectively so that we understand all that God is saying to us and spread God's kingdom to every corner of this earth. It gives us insight into God's heart. It helps us align our purposes with God's purposes and our needs with kingdom needs. And we begin to see more as we dig into the word of just how well God had this all planned out. And we are able to see our next step just a little better. And he gave us the word and brought us here together to prepare, to equip, so that we can be equipped for doing good. See, all of us were created to do good. God wants to equip us and empower us to, to do just that. And through God's word, as we dig into the Bible, as you begin to study on your own, as you begin to come together more frequently and hear messages from the word of God, you'll see that in his word, we learn these values of compassion and of justice and of serving others. We learn to do what it is that we're here to do. I mean, just like a skilled craftsman, an engineer, builds a bridge from one place to another, so we see this master engineer, this engineer of the universe, has prepared a way for us to build a bridge from between those who are lost, those who are struggling, those who feel they have no hope, to build that bridge to God where they'll find all knowledge, where they'll find true hope, and where they be can begin to live their life more effectively. See, when we apply Scripture, our actions begin to reflect the love that Christ has shown for every single one of us. Through his gift of salvation. And we begin to impact others around us as a result of what we glean from the Word of God. God is good. God wants us to be prepared and God wants us to do good in this world. God put us here to do good on his behalf in this world. And another reason to equip ourselves is so that we can commit to equipping the saints, to equipping the others around us. See, all of this is the basis for why we want to equip, and, and we want to set you on a path to equipping others, and we do that by equipping you with the Word of God. And as a local church body, as Rockfish Church, as this group of people in this room, Rockfish Church, Aberdeen, we're committed to equipping you as God's people to go to the people that he has sent you to so that you can do your mission and you can do it consistently, consistently, creatively, compassionately, and effectively as well. John Wycliffe said this. It's, it's a great quote. It says, the Bible is God's voice speaking to us just as truly as if we heard it audibly. I mean, what do we hear people say all the time? Well, maybe you don't. I do. I don't know God's will for my life. What does God want me to do? I just want to hear from God. And all I can think is, is that a Bible on your table? God's speaking to us. We have the opportunity to open and see what God thinks about any situation. If you want to know what God's thoughts are, if you want to know what God's will for your life is, study. Study and apply the word of God to your life. Equip yourself. When you head out of here, when you go to, when you go anywhere, man, you're headed to the mission field. Be prepared. And it says in the word that the word is here to equip us for all that we have been called to do. And this is such a We've heard this passage so many times. If you've been around the church at all, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Well, what does a lamp do? It illuminates everything around us. See, with the word of God illuminating our path, 
we can see not just where we're going, but we can see where we're at. And that helps us take that next step. See, we just don't want to know the way. We need to know the way. This world is a dark place, and when you think about this metaphor of a lamp, just think about how when you have light, maybe it's a lantern, maybe it's a flashlight, whatever you have got, it begins to push away the darkness. It begins to send the shadows somewhere else so that you can see more clearly where you're stepping and where your next step may lie. And it says here in Psalm 119, 105, that your word, God's word, is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. So if you want your way to be illuminated, get into the word. Understand what God is saying to you. Let him show you where you are. If you're unclear, let him show you where to take your next step. Let him show you where the next best step is. We can always find somewhere to step, but can we step there safely? Can we step there correctly? Can we know not only where we are, but where we're going? We can when we let the word of God illuminate our path. In Proverbs 30, verses 5 and 6, it says this, every word of God proves true. He's a shield to those who take refuge in him. Do not add to his words, lest he rebuke you and you be found a liar. So we don't need more beyond this. And you may wonder, well, why are you up there pontificating from that chair on the platform then? As God gives us understanding into how to apply his word, I don't need to add anything to his word because he's given me understanding and he's given that to you as well. That's a gift that we get. As the Holy Spirit gives you understanding of all that God is showing you and teaching you and left for you to study in his word, you'll find yourself more able to navigate just about everything that comes along the way. So what about the authority of the word? Can we trust the word of God? Well, historically and scientifically, yeah, we can. So many things have been proven. I heard somebody say recently, 38 Old Testament figures, names from the Old Testament Testament had been proven to be actual people from science who in some cases may have been trying to disprove that any of what we read in the word is true. But it's been proven again and again that these things actually happen. These aren't stories. I I really hesitate to use the word story if Bible is somewhere in the sentence. These aren't stories. These are accounts. And when we realize what God is doing in this world and what God has been doing in this world as we read these accounts in the Bible of these characters, and we realize that science, again, in many cases which had sought to prove or disprove that any of this ever happened. They begin to prove these things again and again and again. We realize we can trust the word of God, that there is authority in the word of God. It's been proven to be consistent with reality and beneficial for life, beneficial for living for every single one of us. And it answers the major questions that others may seek to find. Science, biology, genealogy, all of those things that that are looking for meaning, looking for purpose, looking for what any of this has to do with now, looking for how the past relates to now through genealogy, how this DNA all works together. The more they study, the more they realize this had to be a magnificent design. There had to be a designer. There is authority in the Word of God. You can trust the Word of God. And as we dig into understanding, our understanding of the word and and all it has to say, let me read this to you from Proverbs 4, 7. It says, the beginning of wisdom is this, get wisdom. Pretty profound. The beginning of wisdom is this, get wisdom. Though it costs all you have, it continues, get understanding. We're to seek these things. We want to know and the word of God says, in here you can know. Why would God, God put such a clear and obvious emphasis on understanding, though? So that we can begin to apply the word. Because through understanding, 
It's a requirement for any skilled operation. For any skilled application, we must first understand what it is that we're to apply. Agreed? The right application of the wrong understanding can lead to disaster. And three things I want to share with you about application, application of the word. Application is the key to transformation. When we begin to see all that, that God has shared with us here in his word, it's when we begin to apply those things to our life that we begin to see the transformation in our lives. It's when we begin to change and become changed by the word of God itself. Application is the expression of faith in our lives. When we begin to trust God to the extent that we would rather side with what he says in his word than what the courts of our nation, the signs on the door of the place we work, when we put the word of God and its truth above what we know we can get away with because it's legal, we begin to understand that application of the word is what is transforming us. An application is an invitation, an invitation to know God and to know him more, to know him better in our lives. Going back to, to our mission, the mission of Rockfish Church, which is really the mission of all believers. It says making, equipping, and releasing. Look at the parallels here. Why are we here? Our mission is making disciples. Make, equip, and release. Equipping is simply the application of the word toward maturity in our lives. We're here to make disciples. We're here to equip disciples disciples, to teach them, to train them, to see them grow, to grow ourselves as followers, as believers in Christ. And finally, to release, to release not to go somewhere else and do something else, but to release ourselves and to release others, those, who, those disciples that have been made, who have been equipped, to release them into the ministry that God has called them to, knowing that they are following the truth. They have learned to equip themselves, to prepare themselves for the mission, for the battle, for the life that lies just ahead and to do what we were all called to do, which is repeat that cycle, to make, equip, and release, to make disciples, to teach and train them, to release them into ministry, to do the same. This is how replication. This is how kingdom growth, this is how our mission, our co-mission is accomplished by each of us realizing that we are in this cycle of making, equipping, and releasing. In Ephesians 4 verses 11 through 14 it says, so Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers, to equip his people for, the, for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up and we, we, may, we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. So we read this and we realize God's done his part but we need to ask, what's, what's our part? I need to ask, what's Dan's part? You need to ask, what's your part? How do we prepare to be prepared? It comes down to having a correct attitude. And what's the correct attitude? Are you teachable? Do you come here or do you go anywhere and decide you already know it? Do you hear a message or do you, do you maybe visit a church or do you go to anything and think, I've heard all this? Or are you teachable? Are you looking for what's wrong? Are you looking for holes in the teaching? Are you like science often does? Are you looking for that one little thing that nobody else noticed? 99 people are looking forward and you're the one saying, ah. I'm not sure about that. That's great in science, but in faith and trust, it's a little bit different. When you understand and trust the word of God to be true, 
you begin to look at things a little more differently. And sometimes when we are in a gathering, even like this one, there may be somebody sitting here now saying, I know more than that. I know better than that. Let me just say, knowing what's right and doing what's right are two different things. Knowing that you need is different than doing what you need to be doing. Another way to gauge our attitude, if we have the correct attitude, is asking ourselves, are we intentional? You know, being intentional indicates you understand the reason for learning, for equipping, for growing ourselves in Christ. And when you intend to be prepared, when you come into this gathering, and when you say, I'm coming here to get all that I can today because I want to be better prepared because I know what I dealt with yesterday, and I don't know how I'm supposed to have the answer for that. I don't know how I'm supposed to respond to these situations. I don't know what to do. Well, today we heard that God's Word is a lamp to our feet. It shows us where we are, and it lights the path on where we're going, helping us find that next step. And when we come here and we intend to get what we can, or when you sit down, maybe you have a quiet spot in your home where you sit and you open the Word of God, and if you don't, let me encourage you to do that. But as you begin to do that and you open the Word, if you open the Word of God and you begin to let God speak to you and then you are speaking to God and the two of you are there communicating, if you are intending, if you are intentional about growing as a result of you coming together, if you communicating, if you come into this church or any other church or any gathering where they're teaching the Word of God with the intent of growing, of knowing more, your attitude's in the right place. You're headed in the right direction. You'll be searching for a greater and a more effective way in all gatherings. Leaders, leaders are learners. Those who realize they don't know it all, they don't have all the answers. These are the people who become leaders in our world. Those who realize that they are not the top or they don't have everything that they need quite yet. And they're always willing to learn from the experiences of others as well. So being intentional and being reasonable. You know, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, it says this in verse 2, and that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men, for all men have not faith. See, there's some unreasonable people in the world that we both live in. But it says here that we've been delivered from that. Jesus Christ, through his gift, through his grace on the cross, has given us what we need in this world. And he has delivered us from these unreasonable people. So when we come together, when we come together, and I say that we're here to make, equip, and release, and we're here today equipping in what we're calling equipping point. We come with expectations, and we need to make sure they're the correct expectations. You know, failed expectations can be hard to overcome. If you come here hungry and get fed, you'll go away realizing you have been fed. But if you come here with intentions of anything but growing in Christ, then you'll walk away with what you walk away with. But if you come here intending to hear something, if you come here with the correct attitude, you come here expecting to hear from God, you will. Because his truth is in this word and it's not hidden at all. And here's what you can expect from this series that we're calling Equipping Point. You can expect continued and measured spiritual growth in your life. Continued and measured spiritual growth. In your relationships, you can expect transformation. As you grow in Christ, as you become more mature in Christ and all that you're called to do, you can expect relational transformation in your life. How you deal with others, whether it's someone within your family, whether it's someone that you have had a hard time with for the last 18 years, you can expect things to change when you begin to allow the Word of God to mold and shape your life. 
You can expect new attitudes, new insight into what the Word of God has for you, into how to apply the Word of God. You can expect to increase in knowledge and in wisdom. But you can also expect a little resistance, a little resistance, a little frustration, because we have this enemy in this world. And this enemy, this Satan, this one who is so against God is constantly working on you in your fleshly body and mind, trying to get you to do what he did, and that is reject God. And as you begin to grow and become more like Christ in your life, you can expect there to be resistance. But just like going to the gym, what does resistance do in the gym? Resistance makes us stronger. When you come up against the opposition in your life, in your world, even in your prayer life, realize that it's that resistance that gives you the opportunity to grow, to become stronger, and to move forward with more confidence than ever before. Because if you're encountering resistance, if you're encountering problems, you're probably on the right track. Because Satan doesn't want you to become like Christ. Satan doesn't want you to reach people and turn their eyes toward God. So things will come up, things will happen, and you'll find yourself looking the wrong direction, whether to the left or to the right. But let me just encourage you to keep pushing, keep pushing forward knowing what you have been put here to do and begin to apply the Word of God to your life. You know, commitment to doing And to knowing and to being right is not the same as being, knowing, and doing right. Most people will admit that they know better, but not everybody will commit to doing better. It's different to know and to do. I just want to encourage you to be strong. Get into the Word. Let it begin to shape your life. Let God speak truth. Let God speak truth to you in this world. Let him speak through his word. Begin to approach him knowing that you want to become more like him, knowing that you want to truly follow what Jesus Christ has for you in this life. And and you might say, well, I'll just come to church, man. It's cool. I'll get it there. Why do I need to be prepared? I'm not going into ministry. Anybody remember what happened during COVID, just three years ago, when the government said, you can't meet together, you can't come together. Well, what if that went a notch further? Not being a doomsday guy at all. What do we talk about when we talk about World War III? We talk about nuclear strikes, right? And what does a nuclear strike do to the electrical grid. Think about it. What we did during COVID was we figured out a better way to do online church, which requires more than a little bit of electricity and requires things like internet and ways for us to communicate. But one of the prime things that a nuclear strike will do is disrupt our ability to communicate via electronic means. So why do you need to be prepared? Because you are the one that carries the truth of the gospel. All of us. That's why we're here. We're here to make disciples. I'm here to make disciples. We are here to equip, to train, and to get prepared for what lies outside the door. And every one of us, as we grow, we've all been commissioned. We've all been released to do the same. Back to what Jesus said in Matthew 28, 19 and 20. Go and make disciples. Baptize them. Teach them to observe all that I taught. We're the carriers of the gospel. This is why we prepare. This is why we are here to equip. Because we can't rely on somebody else. Because things happen whether that is the government saying it's no longer legal for us to meet, or whether that means our 
communications, our means of communications have been interrupted to the point where somebody else can't do it for us. What have we done to prepare our hearts? What do we know about the gospel? Are we coming here with the correct attitude? Are we coming here teaching, teachable? Are we coming here intentional on gleaning something today and the next time and the next time so that we can grow, so that we can mature as believers, so that we can make, equip, and then release toward kingdom growth, to our own personal growth? Man, God's Word provides this pathway, pathway to our success, our, our personal growth, our kingdom expansion, and truly a life that's overflowing with goodness. This is what we're put here to do. We're here to be equipped. Let me invite you to stand with me if you're able and we'll pray. Father God, thank you for your word. Thank you for what you have given us to navigate our way through this life. Father, knowing that your word is true and that you, the one whose word that we read and study and apply to our lives, you're the one who created this universe. You understand a little better than we ever will. And in my case, a lot better than I ever will. But Father, I know that you said the beginning of wisdom is to get wisdom. Father, may I open your word. May, may everyone in this room open your word to get wisdom. Father, bring us along. Teach us. Let us lead others that we might fulfill the commission that we've all been given to make, equip, and release. Pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen.